right, welcome in DDSN Nation. Let's talk a little college basketball. I'm going to do a little recap show for y'all uh, going over last night's game, Super Tuesday. I'm going to try to do this every day, uh, except I'll, I'm going to try to do it at nighttime after the game. So right after the games, that way it's like a, a better, fresher kind of a recap review for everyone, just in case you missed some of the games last night. I'll go ahead and go over you know, the bets that we had the night before, as well as going over each game and whatever I feel it's important to know for the next day, coming week, weekend, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to start from the top. And one of our first games of the day was in the Big East, uh, Seton Hall at Georgetown. Georgetown kept up with Seton Hall. It was a pretty close game. Uh, I wouldn't say back and forth. I don't think Georgetown really had the lead in the game, but it's a pretty tough game for Seton Hall coming off two huge wins. Um, so Seton Hall kind of started slow this season, but now they've kind of turned it around and they ended up beating Georgetown 74, 70 Georgetown covered the spread. I believe it closed at seven. So Seton Hall gets the win. That's all they needed. Don't need a flashy win. Uh, they're pretty much trying to, uh, claw their way back into, uh, the national conversation, national picture to try to make the tournament and being at the top of the big East, that wouldn't hurt. Right. So Seeing Hall's looking pretty good right now, and um, they're a team to watch in the in, in the in the Big East. They're pretty uh, physical, tough inside. Of course, sometimes offensively challenged, but they like to shoot the three pointer. And the, when the three pointer is falling, they're playing defense. Seeing Hall usually has a, a really good game. And now let's go to Ames, where the number two team in the country, our number two rated team, the Houston Cougars, traveled to face the Iowa State Cyclones. Cyclones, you know, the little Ames magic. We had a feeling that, you know, there would be an upset. But I also took Houston in this game to trust their defense. And I would say this. I wasn't blown away by Iowa State's performance other than the defensive on the defensive side of the ball. I would say played a great game on defense. Uh, I, that's kind of the, I want, I would say that's probably the best defense I've seen Iowa state play uh, in a very long time, almost ever. They were locked in completely uh, guarding, you know, they're guarding their man. They're right in their face. I was, I was surprised how, uh, how they're how how they're able to play defense for basically 40 minutes. Houston kept it close. They were tied, but I would say just made way too many plays at the end of the game and they didn't miss their shots. They made huge, they made every, every shot was tough for the Houston Cougars and they just couldn't, they just couldn't get an easy bucket. Anytime they'd get into the paint, I would say would force a, a tough shot on them. And the three pointer wasn't falling for, for Houston. They made some at the end of the game that got them back in, uh, in the second half, but towards the end of the game, Iowa state made their buckets. Houston didn't, uh, what killed Houston was their inability to, or, Basically, Iowa State continued to turn Houston over. The Houston turnovers were a problem, and it ended up haunting the Cougars, and they took the loss right on the chin in uh, Hilton. So that was a great win for Iowa State. They needed that win to try to get their, their season back on track. In my opinion, Iowa State hasn't had a good year. Uh, a lot of expectations, but they really haven't played anybody. I think the last tough game they had was against Iowa, and they blew Iowa out. Uh, before that, they had tournament games, and the last time we really saw them was against AM, and they blew a 20 point lead to a very injured AM team. AM was missing their three best players. And, you know, I think Iowa State, with this win, they lost a close game in Oklahoma. They played Oklahoma pretty tough on Saturday, but uh, they still ended up losing. This was a huge win. And, you know, the Big 12 is basically a fist fight every night. So any win in the big, in the big, Excuse me. Any win in the Big 12 is huge, especially for Iowa State trying to crawl their way back into it. Uh, let's see here. The next game, uh, Kentucky against Missouri at Rupp Arena. We had Kentucky laying 11 and a half points. I like the Kentucky defense. I like their offense, uh, especially in comparison to Missouri. But I will say Missouri did play a tough game. Um, they went on a stretch there where they went on, I would say it was like a 10 to a 14 point run um to get right right back into the game in the first half but uh K kentucky went ice cold that was you know a little bit of adversity for kentucky they had um i want to say man they went on a stretch there where they couldn't they couldn't uh they couldn't make anything especially from the three-point line they started the game five of 11 from three and then after that they went ice cold until the end of the half 
And then in the second half, Kentucky got back into the groove. They were able to score 90 points. And again, I talked about this before the season started. Kentucky is probably the most talented team with the most NBA talent. So by the end of the year, uh, come March time in the tournament, they're going to be one of the best teams in the country. They already are right now. Uh, like I've said before in uh, different articles on our website, that you know they're they're way ahead of schedule. This this Kentucky team, they're very impressive. Excuse me, and they're obviously a team to watch because they, I have them in the top five right now. And you know, after Houston and Purdue losing, I still think Houston's a good team, but Purdue, we know once March comes around, they're a pretender. Uh, even if they get fifty foul shots, that's the only way they could stay in a game is shooting 40 free throws compared to the other team. So um, I really like Kentucky. A little straight shot. A little straight shot there at Purdue. But uh, but Kentucky's a great team, and they showed it last night. Covered the spread. Got close at the very end. But thankfully, Kentucky hustled and played hard to the very end of the game, to the final buzzer, got us the cover, and they ended up winning by 13 points. So another game. This was, this was a really good game, and this is probably the, my, the most – one of the most impressive teams last night for me, and that was Texas beating Cincinnati on the road. Not an upset. Texas, I don't. I took Texas out of our top twenty-four rankings, uh, our twenty-four pack rankings. I took Texas out and put basically put Texas Tech in their spot, and most of that was due to Texas's loss at home to the Red Raiders. They did. They, I would say they played a tough game. It was a tough first half. But then, of course, the UT offense disappears, and it disappeared in that game, but that wasn't the case last night against Cincinnati. Cincinnati coming off a massive road win at BYU to open up their Big 12, you know, basketball life, and, you know, huge win. So now they got to play, you know, play a UT at home that UT's desperate for a win. And again, in the Big 12, every game counts. Every game matters. It could be the difference between being an eight seed and a two seed. Uh, which we know is is massive, but <clears throat> Cincinnati still played a tough game. And I think one of the key things for Texas was that there wasn't any, uh, Shedrick didn't play at center. He didn't play at all in the game. In my opinion, he's a pretty soft player. And last night kind of proved that Texas doesn't really need him in the interior. Uh, on Yemma, um, their backup center, I feel is way better, plays with a much, a lot more energy. Uh, compared to Shedrick, Shedrick just kind of gets in the way. He's tall, but um, he's not very good. And he's had multiple opportunities this season. Like like his best game was against Louisville. That, I mean, that should tell you everything you need to know. So, so yeah, I don't think he's very good. But uh, Texas ends up getting the win behind Dylan Disu. I think Disu uh, scored 33 points. He had an amazing game. He got to his spots. He was inside the paint. I think, uh, not Missouri, I think Cincinnati's going to have an issue with um, guarding the middle, guarding the interior. Uh, Texas was able to out-rebound him, and Texas was using a smaller lineup. Brock Cunningham was in the starting lineup. Uh, Disu was basically playing a center, and they had Dylan Mitchell, Amos, and then Tyrese Hunter. Tyrese Hunter also played a great game. Um, but Cincinnati, Cincinnati still is a kind of a young team. But again, they have transfers. They have Lacocious. Lacocious had a great game. Their center, Lycan, they had a great game. Um, so Cincinnati is going to be a pretty good team, but this was a massive bounce back for Texas. The, uh, they made a bucket at the buzzer and they won. So watch out for this UT team as they crawl back into the national conversation, at least for me. For me, I could, I could, I could probably count, and I did because of – the 24 pack rankings taking them out. I probably count 24 teams probably better than the Longhorns on a neutral floor, but you know, I mean, hopefully I'm wrong, but this was a massive win and great win for Rodney Terry and his crew. Um, they didn't play, they played tough defense, but again, I, I don't think they played a great game defensively. Uh, Dylan D Desu just took over and you know, they locked up the win, but good for Texas. Huge win, huge win, not a bad loss from Cincinnati, but, Coming off that huge BYU win, yeah, that's kind of tough. That's kind of tough. And I think that's the first road – I think that's the first true road game Texas has won this year. I may be wrong, but I think I read last night where before the game they hadn't won on the road or they haven't won a true road game. So I think that was their first one. So that was a massive win for Texas. 
Uh, heading to the ACC, Wake Forest against Florida State. Wake Forest has been on a on a tear lately, but that came to a screeching halt against the Seminoles. Seminoles have been up and down, up and down, up and down all year. They again, it's a Seminoles team where they have five guys who are all like six seven, six six. So they all they really play positionless basketball, cover every position basically. Um, I like this Florida State team at the beginning of the year, but then they had some bad losses. SMU killed them. So I don't really know how good Florida State is. I didn't watch any of this game. I'm just looking at the score right now. Um, I know Wake Forest, they're coming off a couple big wins. Uh, overtime against Miami on Saturday. And I'm not sure who they play next. Not uh, Same with Florida State. But that was a great win for Florida State. Probably a bad loss for Wake Forest. But it was a road game. And let's see if they bounce back from it. Another great Big 12 game. Kansas State going on the road against West Virginia. Uh, we had Kansas State laying two points. We knew Kansas State was a great defensive team. And same old story, West Virginia. They are not good. They're not good this season. They're not very good at all. Uh, they can shoot the three-pointer, make three-pointers. But other than that, if the three's not falling, they, they have no other means of uh, – there's no other way for them to score. Um, usually they have, like, their seven-foot center. I don't even know if he played last night. He may be injured. But – but yeah, Kansas State, they were they were neck and neck at half in the end of the first half again. The three-pointer and free throws kept West Virginia in this game. I think uh I think Kansas State was shooting 60-50% in the first half and West Virginia was shooting around 30 to 40%, but they're shooting like 60% from 3 and that kept them in the game and obviously it did not last. Kansas State ends up running away with this one 14 points. I think K-State's a very underrated team. They play great defense, veteran squad. They got they got uh Tyler Perry and uh Arthur Kaluma, two great players. They lost they lost their center Tomlin, but I think this is still going to be a pretty good Kansas State team. They don't uh, they're not ranked right now cuz I I feel like they have a bad loss, but Kansas State's still a great team and they're going to be pretty good and tough in the Big 12. All right, Big Ten basketball. Indiana travels to Rutgers. <sighs> Same story, different game for the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana can't win on the road. Anytime they have a road game, they get blasted. I think they have one road cover, and that was against Michigan. But other than that, this Indiana team, they just they're not they're not very good. They lost a lot of star power last year. A couple NBA players, and this year. They they brought in uh Kelly Ware. He's been he's been solid, but there's really nobody else around him. You have Raynow inside. He's solid, but who's your, unless they're at home shooting three pointers, Indiana's not a very good team. And last night proved it. Rutgers has been up and down, but that's a good game for Rutgers. Um, SEC game. Let's see here. This was an interesting game. Uh, South Carolina, Alabama. South Carolina coming off a big, big road win. Oh, no. It was a home win against Mississippi State. Solid solid win. I think they ended up winning by one or two points. And Alabama. Alabama, the record before last night. I think they are 9-5. And, and the Crimson Tide, again, they're one of those teams that have been up and down. But they played They played a tough schedule. They played Purdue. They played Arizona. Um, they, played, they had some other tough uh, out-of-conference games. Um, Ohio State and... I'm not sure who else they played in that tournament, but yeah, they they had a tough they have a tough schedule. But Alabama, when they start hitting their threes, watch out. This was a one point game at halftime, and Alabama, I, I swear they didn't miss a. I I watched the beginning of the second half. They really really didn't miss a shot, especially a three pointer in the second half. And South Carolina went ice cold. I think there was a point at least before I turned turned it off, changed the channel. South Carolina was 0 for 15 to start the second half. While Alabama on the other side was shooting 80%, 90% from three. And Alabama ended up uh, railroading South Carolina. Uh, we had South Carolina getting 12 points. I thought they had a good enough offense, but maybe it's just a good offense at home. Alabama played great defense, but again, Alabama is one of those teams. They almost lost to Vanderbilt. Uh, they're one of those teams that's like, yeah, they're good at home. Can they win on the road? Uh, we haven't seen that yet. 
Um, they did. I think that game was at Vanderbilt, but again, Vanderbilt, they're probably going to be the worst SEC team in the country or in the conference. So a good win for Alabama, not a bad loss for South Carolina. That's only their second loss of the season, but good win for Alabama. They really needed that. Uh, to the A-10, Rhode Island over Davidson. I think Davidson was favored by like three to four points. And Rhode Island ended up beating them 79-74. Huge win for Rhode Island. And I think that knocks Davidson down to 0-2 in the conference. So that's not good for uh, for Davidson. But a great win for Rhode Island. I think Rhode Island's 2-0 and in conference now. That's huge. So good win for Rhode Island. And I'm going to keep my eye on them. I didn't watch any of the game, but... Um, I remember looking into the game before because I wanted, I, I thought about playing Rhode Island, but they were on the road. So I, I stayed away, uh, VCU against George Mason, another upset win here in the A-10 VCU takes down George Mason, uh, VC or no George Mason was favored by three, three and a half. I didn't want anything to do with it. VCU has been up and down this season, especially after losing to Memphis on the, at home but um yeah i didn't want anything to do with this vcu team or george mason i don't know how good george mason is they've been hot but again untested and we when we found out last night that uh vcu played good enough defense and they got the win 54 50 huge win for vcu uh let's see here what else i'm going through i'm, I'm going through the box scores here and some of them i'm gonna skip because you know we're trying to go over some more relevant games especially with the teams and conferences that we watch and bet on so i'm going to try to stick more with that uh and we watch a lot of 18 and bet 18 basketball so i'll go over those scores and another game in the big 12 texas tech coming off that massive win in austin they destroy oklahoma state in lubbock uh, i believe that spread was about nine nine and a half they ended up winning by 17 points huge win for texas tech texas tech's kind of those transfers, those new players are kind of a mess. Joe Toussaint, some of those other other players are buying into uh, McCaslin's system, defense first and then offense. Had some drama with Pops Isaac, a lot, uh, some legal, possible legal issues, whatever. Now I can get into it. This isn't our true crime, true, uh, uh, you know, law podcast or anything like that. So I'm not really going to get into it. I just know that, you know, Pop Isaac, business as usual, had a great game. And, um, yeah, this Texas Tech team starting to buy in, play defense. And we weren't too sure how good Texas Tech was because, again, untested. How are they going to do in Big 12 play? And now they're 2-0 and in Big 12 play. Oklahoma State's not as good as they have been in recent years. But they, they won in Austin against, a you know, a strong UT team. So Texas Tech's a team to watch. And I think they're 60 to 80. I think they might be 80 to one to win the national championship. I don't know if they'll, they'll do all that because if they, I would say if they played Auburn, Auburn would probably beat them. So I'm not going to have, not going to add Texas tech to our futures list. So, um, but they look good right now. It wouldn't be a bad idea. McCaslin has experience. He's won a couple NCAA tournament games when he was at North Texas. So not a terrible idea. But we could have had them at like 100, 150 to 1 uh, midseason, especially after they beat Michigan. So a little late to the party, but you could still jump on the Texas Tech bandwagon. I just think next year might be a better year for Tech. Isaacs would be in his third year. Um, Joe Toussaint may be gone by then, maybe some others. But we'll see how Texas Tech does. Still a long way to go in the Big 12. It's a grind, so... Uh, back to the A-10, Richmond at Loyola, Chicago. I, this was, I was kind of on the cusp of playing this game, but I wanted to uh, lay the three points with Loyola, Chicago. But again, you love their defense, but they cannot score. I think I looked, they're about 250 in the country, 220 in the country of total offense, and that's terrible. That's, what is it, 330 teams? So they're really low, and they can't score. So laying points with Loyola, even at home, uh, I mean, we did last Saturday and we cashed in, but Richmond's, it's still a tough team. Uh, they were, t they were terrible on the road, but they get themselves a road win. That's a big win for Richmond. Uh, bad, bad home loss for Loyola, Chicago. This is one that they needed to win and it, it slipped from their fingers. 58, 56 spiders roll. Um, Purdue, Nebraska. I kind of wanted to play Nebraska. We usually play Nebraska at home, especially in a dog spot. Always in a dog spot, but I stayed away. Uh, this game's on Peacock. I wasn't going to be able to watch it. 
Uh, so I kind of stayed away. I was kind of like, eh, I don't really want to watch it, but I should have just played these big 10 games. We would have, again, we, 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 we've been dominating the big 10. So, um, especially last week, I think we won every big 10 game. Well, except for one Michigan state, Penn state. I think we won all the rest, but, uh, Purdue again, these guys are pretenders. I don't care how, how much people want to glaze, uh, Zach Eady, but if these guys aren't shooting 40 to 50 free throws a game, they're not good, especially on the road. So when it comes to a neutral floor, I don't want anything to do with Purdue. I don't want anything to do with them on the road. They could beat up on Maryland. Maryland, 200th in the country in offense. So uh, to me, Purdue's a pretender in the long term. Zach Eady, you know, good for him. Pick up your NIL money. Pick up your Purdue records. At the end of the day, you'll only be remembered as a giant guy who shoots 40 free throws a game. So... Yeah, a little, little Purdue slander there, which I don't mind. Great win for Nebraska and Tommy Naga. Tommy Naga had like six three-pointers, I think. Um, so he be, he had a he had a great game. Uh, and Here's another great game from the Big 12. BYU against Baylor. Tough game. BYU had the lead for, I would say, the what, 60% of this game, 70% of the time of this game. BYU had the lead. I think there was at least 10 lead changes. This was a great game. Uh, one complaint. I'm not a big fan of the, the camera setup. Maybe that's because it was a big 12, uh, camera, not like a prime time game camera. I don't know, but in Baylor's new stadium, the camera is way up at the top. So you kind of get a good view of everything, but I feel like it's too far back. Um, and it kind of took away from the game. In my opinion, it was kind of, it kind of felt like you're watching a replay. It, it, there wasn't like a really uh, it didn't give you like a good college basketball atmosphere with that camera angle. I might be in the minority there, but that's kind of my opinion on it. BYU, we have them in our top 24. They'll probably slip out now back to back big 12 losses. Again, if you want to be a top 24 team in the country, one of the best teams in the country, you have to win the, your big 12 games because the big 12 is the best, this best conference in the country, you know, and it'll only get better next year once they bring in more teams, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah. So it's going to be the best team in the country, even losing Texas and Oklahoma. But Baylor, Baylor played tough. Their, their, uh, their freshman played tough. Jacoby Walter, um, uh, I forget, Bridges. Bridges was automatic from three. And Baylor, neck and neck, they didn't falter. Uh, now Baylor goes to two and zero in the big 12. I think that was a huge game for Baylor and a great win, uh, for the bears, especially being at home first big 12 game at home and, uh, Baylor needed that win. They got it. Now BYU's got to figure out what, you know, what they got to do because they lost at home to Cincinnati now on the road at Baylor. Now they're, you know, they're still a, a tournament team, but you know, when you start judge, like not everyone could do this, right? So like Duke killed Pittsburgh. They can't really judge themselves on a national scale when they play Pittsburgh, right? There's really nobody else in the ACC that's kind of can give them that little barometer test. Obviously North Carolina, Clemson, but they really not night in, night out. You really don't have that test like you do in the Big 12. Now BYU is like, well, how really good are we? Did we just have a good uh preseason or or you know like non-conference schedule or are we that good are we not good so now byu's got has some questions they need to ask themselves going to the mountain west love this game uh colorado state at boise we had boise plus two and they end up winning by seven points colorado state had to lead uh in the beginning of the game but boise state again i kind of said this last night in the article if you don't know or you don't follow us on on Twitter, Twit or X, whatever. Um, I put out an, a college basketball article basically every day for our handicaps and wagers for the day. Usually comes out an hour before tip off, so usually uh, uh, four thirty five, uh, maybe five o'clock, right before the first Big East game if we have a Big East play. But um, so always check that out. And down at the bottom, you can see the website. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, but love Boise State. Boise State, like I said, I keep saying, they're not as good as they were last year. They had so much talent last season, but a lot of it returned. They lost maybe a couple seniors, a center, and one of their other uh, wings. But 
this Boise State team's a little underrated right now, and I think they're starting to crawl themselves into that national conversation, at least for me, because I wasn't too sure last week whenever they played San Jose State on the road. I was like, okay, at least we'll get an idea. Is San Jose State, you know, decent this year? Is Bo- If Boise's good, they're going to have a good game on the road, and they ended up killing San Jose State. So I was like, okay, I trust Boise State in this spot, and they've historically they had played Colorado State pretty good, um, and they defeated them. Uh, by seven points as a two-point dog. So, huge win for Boise State and another loss as back-to-back Mountain West losses for Colorado State. So, they're in that same category with BYU. How good are we? We had a good non-conference. How good are we now? So, um, Colorado State's next next game is going to be pretty huge for them. Uh, Wyoming against Utah State. Utah State dominated them. This U- this uh, Aggie team is pretty solid. They're pretty strong. We were high on Colorado State at the beginning of the year, but maybe Utah State's the real deal in the Mountain West. They are the real deal, but I mean like to win the Mountain West. So uh, Utah State might be that team. Creighton played DePaul in Chicago. Creighton just killed them. It's not surprising. Not surprising. Creighton, Creighton was desperate for a Big East win. They got one. We'll see how they do against, you know, top competition. Uh, Vanderbilt at LSU. LSU won by eight points. I don't know if this LSU team is good or not. Uh, They struggle offensively. Sometimes their guards get a little three happy, a little trigger happy. They don't feed the ball inside as much as they should. Um, They struggle against tough defenses. We saw that against Kansas State. So when LSU plays a tough defense, keep an eye out. They played A&M Saturday, and they played a tough game against A&M. Um, and AM and plays tough defense. So a uh, good win for LSU. LSU is trying to hang around, trying to punch their ticket. They're going to need some more wins, definitely bigger than Vanderbilt, but still all in all, it's a good win for LSU win, move on. Uh, we kind of talked about it. Duke over Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is nowhere close as being as good as they were last year. Last year, they were a pretty strong team this year. Not as much uh, again, Duke. Are they good? Are they not good? Uh, last time they played a tough team, Baylor, they won. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see who, who Duke plays next. That could at least give them, uh, you know, a game to see how good they are. I mean, Duke at the beginning of the season, we said Duke and Kentucky, most talented teams, best teams. And they start off really slow, but maybe those freshmen, sophomores, they're getting a groove. Filipowski has been a monster. So. Uh, I'm not worried about Duke come tournament time, but we'll see how they do leading up to that. And, of course, it all depends on seeding. Last year, I thought they were going to have a great run, uh, but the tougher, meaner team, Tennessee, kind of bullied them and and, and knocked them out. Uh, Auburn against A&M. A&M was, kind of was down by 10, made a comeback, had the lead for a little bit in the second half. Uh, this A&M team... They brought back a lot of what a lot of the talent they had last year, but they're not as good as they were last year. They don't play as crisp. They don't play as clean. They don't play as aggressive, in my opinion. Rebounding. They're, last year they never missed free throws. This year they missed a lot of free throws. Um, but you know they're still going to be a good team, and hopefully they can make the tournament. They should have made it last year. They kind of got screwed over, but. Um, Another another impressive team that just keeps crawling up my power rankings is the Auburn Tigers. They've done it on the road at Arkansas. Arkansas is kind of pathetic right now, but they still did it, and they still beat them by 30 points, so that's got to count for something. Duke couldn't couldn't win at Arkansas, and they didn't even have Keon Minifield then. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't disregard the 30-point win for, um, for the Tigers in Arkansas. And... They've struggled against this A&M team for the past 10 years. And what happened? They stayed calm. The guards took over the game. These Auburn guards, I thought they were seasoned last year. I think they're even more seasoned this year. And again, people forget this Auburn team was blowing out Houston in the NCAA tournament last year. What was that, a Sweet 16 game, I think? Yeah, because the winner went on to play Miami. And Miami beat Houston. So I think that was a Sweet 16 game. Auburn against Houston. They are blowing out Houston. And they went ice cold in the last 10 minutes of the game, maybe the whole second half, and they ended up losing. But I think the Auburn Tigers have learned from this. And I wish I grabbed Auburn earlier when they were like 50 to 1, 60 to 1 to win the title. Now they're 25 to 1. And if the guards play like this, the big men, John John A. Broom, 
uh, continues to play this type of offense, defense, and rebounding, Auburn's a real contender. Can they beat Tennessee? I think Auburn can beat Tennessee. Can they beat Kentucky on a neutral? Mm, I don't know yet. That's the game I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing Kentucky-Auburn. Uh, Auburn's faced their first two tests and passed with flying colors on the road at Arkansas. I had Arkansas in that game. Arkansas's Arkansas's pathetic. You, it's time. To, I, I'm going to go on a rant here. It's time to get rid of Eric Musselman. Like he's a good recruiter, but he's not a good coach. If he's had NBA talent year in year out, and they just can't win. And you watch him on the sidelines. Whenever they start to lose, he just sits there on the sidelines and he's just drinking his Diet Coke, drinking his little water. And I, I mean, I'm just, I, I like Arkansas basketball, but he's just not a, he, Arkansas is not going to win with them. They're going to get some NBA recruits. They're going to, you know, make, make uh, splashes in the transfer portal, but putting it together, I don't think he's a man. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Who, who would be the best guy for the job? I'm not too sure off the top of my head. But, you know, his body language in the second half of games, whenever his team's down five to ten points, you know, it's there's just no urgency. There's just lackluster. And that's the way Arkansas plays. Very lackluster. No real leadership. You have Keon Minifield, who I think is one of the best point guards in the country. Um, coming into this season, the way he played at Washington as a true freshman, and then now he finally gets to play at Arkansas. And this guy's just him in Brazil. They're just, you know, they're kind of there's just no direction, and it's kind of frustrating to watch if you like Arkansas basketball. Uh, Muscleman, I don't know how. I think his time is probably. Um, if I was the Arkansas AD, I'd probably fire him after this year, just because there's just no improvement. Arkansas keeps getting more talent, and they keep getting worse. So that's like, you know, that tells you everything you need to know right there. Arkansas keeps getting more NBA talent and they keep keep doing worse, like in conference, in the NCAA, NCAA tournament. So, um, yeah, I don't think that hunger is there anymore for muscle men. I would move on, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Arkansas ran over, but it was, it, was, it was needed. But again, Auburn back on track. Auburn. I think they're the real deal. That's why I have them in my top 10 right now. So Auburn, they're the real deal. Again, I want to see them play another road game. I want them to see, play, see them play Kentucky, Mississippi State. I don't know what their schedule is, but there's a plenty of talent in the SEC. We'll see how they do. But again, I think this team's for real. And they proved it last night, the way that, uh, the way that A&M had to lead, and they stuck with it. And they played defense first, turned their defense into offense. And it works for them. Finally, finally, they're putting it all together. And um, I like Auburn. Back to the ACC, Notre Dame against Georgia Tech. We had Notre Dame plus six and a half, seven and a half, whatever that was, six and a half, I think. And I love Notre Dame in this game. Their offense, I think they're finally starting to figure it out again. Very young Irish team, very young. They're going to be good next year, two years from now. They're going to be really good two years from now. But they're kind of, I think they're kind of getting ahead of schedule here. So, which is good. Shrewsbury, they, he moved his son to the bench, and he had a great game last night. I think he had at least 17 points. Uh, so, that's, I guess that's starting to work for Notre Dame. And the offense is there. Offense is over there, always there. But Notre Dame's a little undersized. That's why I thought that they would struggle against Duke. I wish I watched that game, but I didn't, I didn't watch it. Um, but they, they hung tough and they covered whatever that spread was against the blue devils. And I thought that they had a chance to win last night. I said, I said it in the article and they ended up getting the outright victory. Georgia tech had a crazy three pointer at the end of the game to send it to overtime. But thankfully Notre Dame rolled in, o, in OT Georgia tech only scored uh, two points, I believe. So great win from the Irish. I'm going to keep my eye on them. Been watching them all season. So really nice win in the ACC. Uh, back to the Mountain West, Nevada beat Air Force. What was that? A 13 point game. Uh, I believe I believe the spread was 14, maybe 13 and a half in that game. So I think Air Force may have covered. I thought Air Force would be a lot better this season, but they've been getting rolled by everybody. And that's a good win for Nevada. Again, not heavy competition, but those are the games that you have to win at home to keep in that conversation nationally and in your conference. Uh, which brings us to the next two games, UNLV 
hosted New Mexico. UNLV has had, for whatever reason, they have New Mexico's number. I believe they beat them the last nine out of ten times after last night. And I don't know what it is. New Mexico cannot play UNLV. It's just a bad matchup for them. UNLV is one of those teams like Florida State, up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they're bad. I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they're bad. But that was a great home win for UNLV. Maybe this kick starts them and gets on a, you know, gets them on a nice, Gets them on a nice little bounce back, but we'll 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 have to see what happens though. But still, huge win for UNLV, and that's back to back losses for New Mexico. New Mexico is now in that conversation with the with the Colorado States, the BYU's of the world. You 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 just drop two big tw- you drop you just drop two conference games. How are you going to bounce back? Um, San Diego State was at San Jose State. I know I forget who who the Aztecs play next on this weekend, but I know it's a tough game. I was afraid of the look ahead spot for the Aztecs and they ended up winning by three points on the road. Again, survive in advance. It's, you know, they say survive in advance in the NCAA NCAA tournament, but no, that really starts in conference play, especially if you play in a tough conference like the Mountain West, the Big 12, survive in advance because these wins, they end up, they rack up towards the end of the year. And that's a huge win for for San Diego State because it would have been an awful loss, especially after San Jose State got killed by Boise. So huge win. Great night in the Mountain West. Um, So that's a recap for the day. I'm going to try to do that at nighttime after the games, probably get that out uh, at night, like late at night and up early for people. Um, for people so that people can get a recap going into the next day, like today's games, I don't, I don't have a preview for today's game. So I'm going to be diving into that later on this afternoon, but, um, I think that was a good, uh, review. Let me know what y'all want to hear more of maybe more, uh, Intel into the game, like box score wise. Cause right now I was just looking at the scores going off of whatever I remembered from last night. Um, I didn't go dive deep, like looking at uh, players' numbers and that sort of thing. Just whatever I remembered from last night. And um, let me know if y'all want to see or hear something different or add something or if this is good. So just let me know. I'm going to just keep making these and I'll add these videos to the article that I post every day. That way some people can check it out, get a little refresher before the next day and at least a refresher heading into the weekend because you want to know some of this information Again, heading into Saturday, Sunday games. I think Big Ten, sometimes they double up and play Fridays. But um, it's just good information, and it helps me remember and just go through everything. So uh, let me know if y'all want to hear something else or something more, whatever. Uh, Just give us a like, comment, of course, subscribe. But I appreciate it, and we'll see y'all later, hopefully later tonight, and and, uh, we'll do another review. All right, we'll see y'all.